off the terror blame game and whether Republicans are applying a double standard in criticizing President Obama for failing to speak out on the attempted bombing for three days. It seems Republicans are forgetting that President Bush, also on vacation back in 2001, didn't speak out for six days after shoe bomber Richard Reed attempted an attack on an aircraft bound for Miami. The president spoke about it December 22nd, 2001. We don't know, David, whether or not he's given any orders uh, to any of his soldiers, but we're, we, we take nothing for granted, and so our country still remains on alert. Again, that was December 28th. The incident with the uh, bomber, Richard Reed, was six days early, December 22nd. Here to face off on the double standard issue, Democratic strategist Karen Finney and Republican strategist uh, Brent Littlefield. Um, Brent, you'll acknowledge that there's a clear double standard here, won't you? <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I like this setup. It's just wonderful uh, hearing these types of things. I saw this story originally at the uber-liberal Huffington Post. If we uh, don't know the facts, we'll just make it up, Huffington Post. Right, well, what's um, wrong about this? Wait a second, wrong. but it's also which is not What is liberal. wrong about the story? Obama's been criticized for three days. Name one person, one media account, anybody who criticized President Bush back in December 2001 for waiting six days to talk about Richard Reed. Name one, and the argument is settled. Okay, so uh, the issue here is not the fact that the president waited a while to speak. The issue here is what he said. Um, and, you know, look, we should all be celebrating the fact that we're about to enter a new year here. Happy New Year to you, both Karen and, and David. Um, and we should be thankful that we have uh, folks that work uh, in the CIA and in our military to protect us so we can celebrate a new year here. And, you know, the issue is not what the president, uh, the fact that he waited, it's what he said. And we still have this policy where he has not rejected the idea of sending uh, people back back to, from Guantanamo back to Yemen, and these other places. Well, He's not changed his policy. And so the issue is, is he going to change well, his policy? Well, you've you've totally keep the ignored policy? the He's question. Gonna... You've, to Brent, you've totally ignored the question. Come on, admit it. There was a double standard. There is a difference between 72 hours and six days. I think the bottom line is here, this is not a Democratic issue, Republican issue. It's an American issue. It makes us all concerned. But I also think you can ignore the fact that there is a clear double standard here, that there was a much larger lag of time, and I think what it shows more than anything uh, is just how low the Republican Party has fallen in and how committed they are <laughs> to trying to tear down President Obama, that they would politicize the security of the United States of America. You can't well, deny you what, that, Brent. Since, since this is the holiday season and I'm being charitable, Brent, we're going to give you a pass out of this, but here's the condition. <laughs> All you have to do is you have to admit that, yes, President Bush was wrong to wait six days before talking about Richard Reid, <laughs> and the Bush administration was wrong to release prisoners from Guantanamo back to Yemen. David, I, I always wonder who I'm debating. Am I debating you or, or, or Karen? Uh, <laughs> the issue is, again, not what the president, uh, uh, not the fact the president waited to speak. It's the issue of what the president said. And again, oh, he, that's on, the Brian. issue, that, that's the issue that. that's being raised by Republicans. That is the real issue that's being raised by Republicans, is whether or not so he's going to abandon his policy. You know, you know, Brent, 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 to say that, anything in your view, right? Brent, that's great. That's great spin, Brent. But come on. I mean, the initial <laughs> criticism was about the timing, not just about what he said. And actually, what I would say about what he said, although I would have liked to hear him uh, maybe come out a little sooner and you know reassure the American people, I think American people did appreciate the fact that he's trying to be very forthcoming with information about what's going on and trying to make sure he's got the facts. We know these things uh, will unfold over time and we'll learn more uh, about what the events that led to uh, this incident. But how can you criticize the president for coming out and saying, hey, we screwed up. I mean, do you have a problem with that? What, what I guess the problem is, is is the president going to maintain his policy of sending prisoners from Guantanamo Bay into New York City, which today in the Wall Street Journal on page A2, uh, they said you mean that the city the said it's going to cost more, that, that, that Brent, you mean cost more than policy? 70 uh, I'm speaking about his policy of sending people to New York City to be tried. The, the newspaper today said it's going to cost more than $75 million to have that trial take place in New York City. Are we going to continue to do this at, in light of this recent incident? Are we going to continue well, to send I don't know, Brent, prisoners I mean, there are 240, to, to Yemen? According to the Bureau of Prisons, there are 240 terrorists uh, who've been tried hey, and convicted in the United States. Where were you hey, complaining about the cost of trying all of them? Yeah. Well, I wasn't invited here at MSNBC to talk about that then, David. Maybe I'd be happy to do that. Oh, okay. Listen, listen, the, 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 the issue is it, it, no one's going to sit here and defend uh, the previous policy at, in the light of this of sending prisoners to Yemen. I can't imagine anybody is going to do that. And the issue is, is the president now going to change his policy and, and, and change what he's going to do with, with these prisoners in Guantanamo hey, Bay? It's hey, a Brent, major you, issue in this country. 
Brent, do you think it was appropriate for uh, Hoekstra to send out a fundraising email uh, based on his criticisms of the president on our national security issues? Do you think that was appropriate? A political uh, I, fundraising I email? I'm not working for Peter Hoekstra, so I, and I haven't I'm read that email. I'm just asking you if you think sure. that's appropriate for the I Republicans to do email. that. Oh, I'll I haven't send read it to that you. email, but I'm sure we'll you'll, get a copy you'll, you. sure you'll criticize. I've heard <laughs> lots of criticisms of, of, of his campaign here, here on the air. I'm, so. I'm asking you what I think is a fair question. But, you know, look, I, as, as David said, it's the holidays. I feel like we should be uh, generous because I envy you uh, trying your darndest to de defend what is obviously an indefensible position here. What, what is, what is indefensible is the fact that the president hasn't changed his position. Uh, well, I think, well, we don't know if he's changed his position. We'll find out in the days ahead. Karen Finney and Brent Littlefield, uh, spirited as always, and thank you both for coming on. We appreciate Happy it. Happy New Year.